Coming up, the Bald Man Knife and Tool Thick Atross. Savivi's got a really cool and stylish new button lock we're going to take a look at in Knife Life News. And then how to overpack like a knife junkie. These are the knives I brought with me on my summer vacation. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, my favorite comment from this past week was from Richter Knives. He said, and this was about uh, my most recent interview with Ben Belkin of Jack Wolf Knives. He says, love this. A couple of things I took from this. Ben is super thoughtful. I loved hearing his thought process. And also, after hearing this, I'm excited to see what's coming next. And by the way, that was just announced. Uh, the fixed blade is a home run to me. You can tell every detail is intentional. This is the best interview I've seen of Ben. My two cents on the locking knives is I'd love to see a Venom Jack, as would I, sir, as would I. That would be sick. I couldn't agree more, Richter Knives. And uh, uh, the other one I wanted to see in locking form is what is going to be coming out. So I don't know uh, if that's... Uh, I'm sure that's out there. Uh, so you'll see. It is the Benny, and it's super cool. Uh, thank you for your comments, and thank you one and all for watching and commenting uh, this past week. I do appreciate it. That said, let's now get to a pocket check. Let's get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. Front right pocket today was a classic. I had the XM... 18 by uh, Rick Hinderer Knives, and this is my Spanto Spanto reground uh, by um, Razor Edge Cutlery. Josh of Razor Edge Cutlery reground. This it's got to be going on five years now. Uh, it's been a while. A uh, very, very skilled uh, knife maker and blade grinder. And at, at this time, his his main business was regrinding blades. I know he does uh, some knives himself. Uh, from scratch but this he turned this knife which i've always loved i've always loved the sponto into what it truly was at the beginning uh kind of like a drop point tanto you know you got your flat up front here and then you've got a deep hollow grind going all the way back uh so just very nicely done to really uh brought out the true spirit of the sponto in this regrind and this is really i'm I think that's the only regrind I've ever done. And uh, I say, I think I, I know I've wanted to do a whole bunch, but that's the only one I have. This is pre triway pivot uh, and and very, very this would annoy a lot of you. Uh, it doesn't bother me because uh, it is what it is. It's an older hinderer, but it just, wah, wah, you know, it's, it's there for a little bit of wrist flick and then it's it's there to guard your hand. Uh, so. Uh, I don't have any expectations about the action of this. I have an XM24 uh, that has uh, that's pre triway pivot that has outstanding uh, detent and action. Um, this one just doesn't, but I don't care. I love it. It's mine. All right. Uh, next up, this is another one I'm just really psyched about, but it's brand new to me. Uh, this is the American Blade Works slip joint, and uh, that's what it's going by so far. Uh, I'm pretty sure a uh, slip joint. It is beautiful. Yes, Argo. I had to remember to pick up my dog today. You know, uh, that's we all have ways of remembering things. Uh, very deeply hollow ground sheep's foot blade. So useful. So incredibly sharp. I used this for packaging, um, uh, I guess, about two weeks ago now. And you can get really precise with a blade that thin and sharp. Look at how sharp that is. It's like a razor. And it really does take uh, hair off, and I can shave little bits of my face with this, though I have to be wolfing, A, and B. Uh, it's painful, and I, I wouldn't want to have to do my whole face that way. Uh, for a first outing, for a first slip joint, excellent action. Um, I mean, really nice action. Better than, uh, better than some, uh, not as crisp as others, but uh, uh, a very, very... This is not a disappointment. Let me put it to you this way. It's way better than Greg Medford's first attempt when he made the Gentleman Jack. And I was grateful to receive one from him, but I uh, felt like maybe a little more research was uh, was due. That was a long time ago. Uh, I know uh, Medford Knives is just incredible. They're killing it uh, with their OEM stuff. 
which they have done for people from from time to time, but also their original models. Anyway, this one is the American Blade Works and uh, um, an amazing first outing, especially for a one man show as well. So beautiful knife. Love that thing. Next up, uh, this was the this was in my carry of this was inspired by two things. Uh, coming off a vacation where I was kind of over knived and uh, be the comment uh, today about about Ben's interview. Uh, so I carried this today. This was my fixed blade. Usually this has been a uh, secondary fixed blade to me, but today this was the one fixed blade I had and it was in my back left pocket. Excuse me. And uh, this that's kind of where I've landed. It's where I like it most, though I must admit, sometimes when I sit down, depending on the pants, uh, I'll think, geez, is, is this putting stress on the tip? Like, you know, uh, uh, if the sheath is conforming to the curve of my buttock, uh, is that putting uh, pressure on the tip? But lo and behold, it is not. I can't I can't help but think it, though. Uh, so sometimes I get squeamish and pull it out of my back pocket, put it in the front left. But then I have to find another place for my phone. And, you know, it's just drama. Uh, so back right back left seems to be the best place. Uh, and super excellent uh, little fixed blade knife. Uh, and I something I really love about it is that when it's open, uh, basically all day long, it's shorter than its folding counterparts. So a smaller handle uh, than blade, but same three inch blade as on the original uh, Midnight Jack. Uh, I got the really nice, very dark, very uh, rich black micarta here. This is um, linen micarta. Come on, focus. There it is. Linen micarta, very fine weave. I got a little leather fob in there. Really does help it stay in hand uh, nice, nicely. It gives you a little more uh, option. It makes you feel less crowded and less desperate to hang on to your knife. Um, of course, half of the star of the show of any fixed blade is the sheath uh this is a gorgeous leather sheath i like the way it's starting to conform to the uh to the blade in its shape and yeah that clip is uh, super stout uh as mentioned in the interview and as i've mentioned here a few times all right last up on me uh a charming and cute little knife designed by fair and forge and made by civivi and given to me by my buddy jaime uh i really appreciate this uh it was too small for him and uh, ordinarily, well, this is too small for my, you know, wheelhouse type knife, but it's just right there for that petite. This is like a 2.6 inch blade and, and it's just a fidgety little addictive uh, knife. And also, by the way, extremely sharp, very useful. And and it looks nice here. I got to say it looks nice here but it's even better in person. It is a really beautiful uh, knife. The guys from Fair and Forge are dr great dudes. I've uh, had them on the show a few times. I've always been a little bit, eh, you know, ambivalent about their designs. They're nice, uh, but haven't really done it for me. But I think maybe when I have them in person, it's different because I really like this Odium, by the way, Civivi Odium in person. If you're listening and you're like, yeah, which one are you talking about? So uh, it's got the, I guess it's green. Hang on. Yeah, that's dark green micarta with a black black blade here. And it is a flat ground Civivi. They make both, and they're both super, you know, they're, they're hollow ground and their flat ground knives are so incredibly slicey and sharp. So this is what I had on me today. What would you have on you? I'm going to up the light so we can see a little better there. What did you have on you? Let me know. Uh, I had the Hinderer XM 18, three and a half inch Sponto reground. Uh, I had the American Blade Works slip joint, very aptly named, and the Midnight Fixed EDC from Jack Wolf Knives, beautiful in its little package. And then, of course, this little Civivi Odium that has uh, captured my imagination since it was very generously gifted to me. All right. Uh, speaking of generous and gifts, I want to thank uh, everyone who's been a patron or who, uh, you know, has just become a patron for your generosity. I really appreciate it. We like to uh, pass along um, my good fortune. I get sent a lot of knives. Um, uh, and so we like to give them away. 
And one way we like to give them away, uh, give some of the special ones away to uh, our gentlemen junkies at uh, the top tier. I want to show you what we're giving away this month. It's very special. It is a custom knife from Brent Smith and Bald Man Knife and Tool. Let me put this out here just so you can see. This is the box that comes in. Bald Man Knife and Tool. And this is the Thickatross, a thicker version of his popular Albatross drop point blade. And it is a thick honey. It's a quarter inch thick here of Magna Cut. I believe he said 63 to 64. Does that sound right? Uh, flat ground, super sharp. This thing is incredible. It's got a, uh, what is this handle called? It's called Blackout. Oh, well, uh, the handle is that G10 alternating with a sort of rubberized material. It's not super rubbery like cheesy hunting knives uh it is you just get the ever so slightest little bit of gription uh in addition to the g10 and then you get these nice jimps and this is just an awesome uh edc fixed blade i'm gonna get rid of this box because my camera just wants to focus on that so there it is we're going to be giving this thick atross away and uh brent brent will uh will join us to do so brent of of uh bald man knife and tool really great guy and man he's he has been doing some really great work over the past couple of years i remember the first time i met him in person after meeting him on thursday night knives um he was uh walking around blade show and he had a couple of his own knives on him but i didn't know they were his and i, I asked him like what is that fantastic and it was a in a leather pouch uh sheath it was just something he made Thin, slicey, beautiful. So he does thin and slicey, and then he does these thick, thick, thick boys right here, the thick atroc. So anyway, that is the gentleman junkie knife giveaway knife for July of 2024, which we are now cozily in July. That is smack dab center in the middle of the summer. If you want to help become help support the show and get a chance to win the thick atroc, just go to the QR code right here on the screen or go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Check out everything we have to offer. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the RMJ Tactical on May was inspired by the Japanese Quaken and it's back in stock with new Cerakote finishes. These are made in Tennessee with Nitro V stainless steel, textured G10 scales, and bronze anodized titanium fasteners. The Zero Tolerance 0308 has a sizable handle, solid build quality, and a CPM 20 CV blade with a large cutting belly. Plus, his heavy duty flipper is made in the USA. And the Spyderco Native Chief Lightweight Blackout Serrated is another USA made folder that has a 4 inch blade but weighs just 3.1 ounces. This new variant just arrived with full serrations and a blackout finish. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Knives Ship Free is definitely the uh, the break you don't want to skip uh, if you're watching this show because, oh man, that that uh, lightweight Spyderco uh, Chieftain with the um, serrations and blackout. Ooh, that looks cool. I might have to do that. Uh, it's not the Chieftain. What is it? Uh, the big chief, the big kahuna. All right. First up, this was one that I saw at um, at Blade Show. And I got to say, man, I, I get blinders on at Blade Show. There is so much to take in that usually I don't do much of the taking in from the Civivi tables or or the big companies. I, I'm, I'm so much more about the customs and the smaller makers and people I've already met that uh, I don't get to Civivi and stuff like that till the end of the show. And this year I kind of didn't, but I kept seeing this. I'd, I'd, I'd be walking by and there'd be throngs of people and I kept spotting this Civivi. And I'm very excited about this. You know, I have a little Civivi collection and this is definitely going in it. And this this one right here, the one on your screen with that beautiful Damascene blade 
and the Ivory G10. This is called the Incindi, and this is an in-house design. They have some pretty damn talented in-house designers over there because they've been coming out with some impressive stuff recently. Uh, this one is a 3.48 inch 14C28N drop point with a fuller, very aggressive drop point. Uh, ben Schwartz of Knife News uh, thinks that it's evocative of an, an Italian stiletto. I beg to differ, but that, that's neither here nor there. Um, but if that gives you an idea of the blade, semi-symmetrical. Uh, it's got a beautiful cone, conical if you will, fuller running down the center that I really love. To me, it's very dramatic. And you know it's going to flip open great with the, middle fin with the middle finger, I hope. I hope that that's not too deeply buried in the handle. There it is, black on black uh, G10. 3.8 ounces ambidextrous deep carry pocket clip. Uh, that ivory G10 in Damascus will be their dressed up version, which they do you know, all the time. And I've been very impressive, uh, very, I have been very impressed with their, um, thank you for putting that one up, Jim. I love that. And it would be cool with a little, uh, fake pearl button on that one. Um, but anyway, available soon. I've been very impressed with their button lock recently. That's what I was trying to get out. Uh, available soon. We don't know the date. Okay. Next up, uh, here's another modern one. This one also a flipper, uh, this time from Rosecraft, uh, from Rosecraft's, uh, Savannah Swaggerty. Now I wonder now suddenly I'm like, is that swags? Um, but I don't know. Congratulations to her and, uh, her husband. They just had a baby. She just had a baby. They now have a baby. Uh, congratulations to them. She seems like a lovely person. Um, but this one though, the, uh, walleye, I'm not, sh I'm not sure if that's her. So I'm just going to say, uh, this one designed by Savannah Swaggerty at Rosecraft. Um, one of three recent releases in their modern lineup, a really cool looking flipper. It's kind of a snub nose, uh, or might, someone might even say that that's a clip point because really it is, uh, it's just a it's sort of a snubbed, uh, clip point, but it's, uh, imagine a nice drop point with a, with a nice big opening hole and a nice big flipper, beautifully contoured G10 handle. I love the way it reveals the different layers of uh the colors of g10 and uh this one a walleye and uh a walleye is a big fish in lake erie i know uh, growing up in cleveland a lot of people fish for for walleye on lake erie um i don't know if i've ever eaten it but uh you don't spell it son you eat it uh snub nose uh flipper 3.1 inches of rpm nine uh and this will be out now this is out now <laughs> 3.5 ounces out now uh check it out lastly uh of the new knives here and then we have another story is a um very cool collaboration with we knife company and dalibor bergam who was uh i remember i gotta say it's gotta be now maybe 10 years ago uh i remember him just being huge among some of the uh, YouTubers I was watching who collected custom knives, which I certainly did not then. I don't really have a collection of uh, custom folders at all. Uh, but Dalibor uh, Bergam, I shouldn't just call him by his first name, but I always called him that, Dalibor, because I, I thought that's what his knives went by. I always thought his knives had a very unique look, and they were almost all that I remember integral. He was making integral knives. He's... Um, He's out of Croatia. And uh, so this is perfect for Wee Knife, who does a beautiful job with their integrals and uh, and and their, what do you want to call it, uh, whimsical designs. And this is sort of one part, one part whimsy, nine part tactical uh, coolness. Uh, it's called the Ator, A-T-T-O-R or Ator, trailing point Tonto, three and a half inches 3.55 inches of 20 cv the perennial favorite of we knife company uh integral titanium construction sculpted tie clip which we don't see here in the story but uh, apparently is vine like which is kind of a turn off unless i see it uh i don't like i don't like when people get too creative with the pocket clip you know what i mean especially uh this is quite a sleek design i th i think i think that i just have to see it i'm sure it's not what i'm imagining um heaven help us if it is uh 
Just kidding. Uh, 4.75 ounces and no release date on this beauty. But I, I'm, I am really liking the blade and I like the echo of the handle, uh, how the handle echoes the shape. A beautiful thing. Another beautiful thing, KnifeRights.org or Knife Rights. You know who Knife Rights is. And uh, Mr. Doug Ritter, who I... So sad I missed a Blade Show this year. I like to meet him every year. Say hi, because I talk to him a couple of times a year. And he is just burning the midnight oil every day, every night, fighting for our knife rights. And uh, his latest, or their latest, which means our latest victory, is in Idaho, of all places. And I say of all places because my daughter uh, recently asked one of the places, you know, where would you like to live if, if you didn't worry about being close to family or anything? You could just go live there. I was like, like Idaho or Utah. I kind of... And so it was funny to see that uh, Idaho uh, needed this, uh, but they got it. And it's the Idaho Knife Rights Preemption Bill takes effect. Knife Rights Bill that enacts our signature knife law preemption, HO 620, takes effect today, July 1st. Preemption eliminates local ordinances more restrictive than state law, which only serve to confuse or entrap law-abiding citizens traveling within or through the state. Preemption ensures citizens can expect consistent enforcement of state knife laws everywhere within the state. Okay, so that's the Idaho knife uh, knife rights preemption bill. Uh, just reading on, it says knife rights passed the nation's first knife rights uh, knife law preemption bill in Arizona in 2010, and has since passed preemption bills in Alaska, Georgia, Idaho, Kansas, Louisiana, Montana, New Hampshire, Ohio, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Knife Rights is America's grassroots knife owners organization leading the fight to rewrite knife law in America and forging and forging a sharper future for all Americans. Knife Rights efforts, listen to this, have now resulted in 49 bills repealing knife bans in 31 states and over 200 cities and towns since 2010. Since 2010, so that's 14 years, all of that has been done uh, by Doug Ritter and his uh, very small crew of people helping him uh of lawyers and such uh the preemption is awesome that that means you know as you saw right there you could be uh you could you could be legally walking around with a bowie in your state but not in your county and could get busted for that but not with a preemption bill so idaho there you go that's just another reason i want to move to idaho all right that's it for knife life news coming up we're going to skip the state of the collection because, A, I got nothing new, and I got a lot a lot of knives to show you in my uh, overpacking like a knife junkie, the knives I took on summer vacation. But before we go there, be sure to go to uh, theknifejunkie.com, and you can go to theknifejunkie.com slash shop, and you can check out the different uh, T-shirts that uh, Jim designs and, and that we have there, pages of them, really cool stuff. Uh, but there's also mugs, T-shirts, hats, et cetera, et cetera. So go over there to thenifejunkie.com slash shop and represent your favorite knife podcast. All right, coming up, we're going to take a look at overpacking like a knife junkie. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I was a little shocked and embarrassed when I came home from this past uh, week's trip. Uh, we go every, uh, every year, we go up to the, the same place in the mountains and love it. I love it. but. Um, I like to think I'm a man of adventure. I'm a man who can just up and go when he has to, you know, like Robert De Niro, shut it down and walk away, you know, whenever I need to and just travel light. And then I looked at the knives I brought with me and this was enough weight to hold a body underwater for several weeks. Uh, and there were some that I didn't even intend to bring. So I'm going to show you those first because they ended up playing uh, quite a role in this week that really required very few knives. As a matter of fact, I cooked with, uh, that's mostly what I did with, with these knives. But first, uh, let me show you two of the tagalongs. Uh, I got the pool bag. You know, we have a family pool bag with all the towels uh, that we take to our pool. And I guess I had stowed this in there and didn't know I had brought it. And man alive, did this end up being 
a super handy knife. The X1, the Civivi X1. This was recently sent to me by Civivi, and uh, we showed it off here, and uh, I did a close-up video of it. Uh, this is designed by Brian Brown, and this is basically his Jaeger model, a sort of a budget version, not sort of, definitely a, uh, a easy to afford version of his very popular Jaeger, uh, Jaeger model. And it has a deeply hollow ground 14C 28N blade, or I'm sorry, Nitro V, <laughs> Nitro V blade, uh, easy to confuse, right? Uh, super thin, super hollow ground, and this ended up being uh, coming in clutch when I had my um, oh I don't even have it here with uh, the the Grizzly from Off Grid Knives was there as always uh, doing kitchen duty, um, and it did get dull uh, not because of how I was using it, and this is what I ended up using for red peppers and tomatoes just getting through the skin because uh, the the offerings where we were. Uh, or super limited. Anyway, so this this ended up, uh, like I said, coming in super handy. Was very psyched to have it. This was the other stowaway, uh, my spooky pockets polymer knuckle dusters, and uh, of course I didn't need to use them. Thank heavens, but they are so light you can drop them in the pocket of a swimsuit and forget about them all day and uh, on case uh, uh, you know unless you get in a pool fight or a shark sharks and minnows gets aggressive or whatever it is my daughters and i play some pretty aggressive games in the pool uh, though never ever have we considered uh, knuckle dusters as part of them but you know it's like try and try and uh, try and get me underwater dad or try and you know flip, flip you know whatever it is it's always aggressive and we come up with cool games and um but th this was in my back pocket of my swimsuit basically the whole time. So in case uh, it came to fisticuffs over the last tuna fish sandwich or uh, a pool game, I was in the definite advantage. Uh, so Civivi and uh, Spooky Pockets, thanks for uh, stowing away. Uh, you were not asked to come. You were not invited, but uh, you were welcome. So thanks. Well, as the destination was uh, over two hours away at by car, and really my stipulation is one hour away by car, I have to carry this knife because I'm a, a creature of habit and I'm also a little superstitious. And uh, my grandmother said, you can't be Catholic and superstitious. Uh, well, that was one grandmother. The other one said that, but in practice, maybe... Uh, Maybe you can be a little superstitious because I sure as hell am. Um, and to me, this is the knife that is my road trip knife, period. You know, I talk about it all the time because uh, it's a special knife in very many different ways. First Microtech, first S35VN. This was made in 2012, by the way. First knife with a glass breaker. First knife with bearings. And I didn't even know it. I just thought it was just the smoothest knife of all time uh, for no apparent reason. Um, and I'm sure there are, oh, first knife with carbon fiber. A lot of firsts on this one. But the reason it's the uh, road trip knife is the glass breaker. For some reason in my mind, uh, you know, if the car flips over, I'm going to need that glass breaker. Here's a little interesting tidbit. On the way, over, uh, on the way home, uh, we, were, we were tandem. My wife was in front of me. I was behind her uh, driving down Route 81 in Virginia, and someone tried to run me off the road. Literally, we exchanged paint, but I did not. I, I I wasn't going over the bridge or the overpass, and I had someone behind me. I couldn't jam on the brakes. Uh, I was like, not today, dude. And uh, I actually, you know, we exchanged paint at 70 miles an hour. It was not, it was not fun. But if uh, we had to break out of our car, I had this in my pocket. So I've got that going for me. Microtech SoCom Elite. This is just my, my, my go-to travel knife obviously and uh, something i love about this knife and i don't talk about this too often but because this is tipped down and it's one of two knives that i accept that from um the clip and clip the clip itself and clip placement is important um it's got to be obviously a spring clip i think i think tip down sculpted clips are just weird um but also it's got to have something like this notch here which is really there to accommodate the pivot but i find it's great to accommodate khaki pants and pants that have excuse me 
front pockets with seams on a slant. It keeps the it keeps the knife from going too horizontal in your pocket. That little notch there. So uh, this is just a great knife, and all of the hardware on this is proprietary. And uh, knock on wood, I have never had to do anything to it, so I've never had to worry about trying to fit or you know find a bit that fits those annoying little three hole screws. You know. Okay, next up, an important one, uh, though an unsung hero, uh, the my, uh, Victorinox Compact. Uh, I had this one with me pretty much all the time. It's super light, and I've got this dangler clip now, and it makes, I have four of them, so I have it on four different Victorinox. It makes them so much more carryable to me. Um, they don't rattle around at the bottom of the pocket. They don't go uh, perpendicular to your femur. They, you know, they just hang in place. Uh, this one is great, the compact, because it, it's, it's not compact in length, but it packs a lot into a two-layer Victorinox design. You've got the main blade here. You've got, instead of the usual opening layer here, you've got a combination tool. So it's a cap lifter and a bottle opener, as you can see, or a, a cap lifter and a can opener. Um, you'd be using this point. It's also a screwdriver, a regular flathead screwdriver, and you can use that point, which I have for Phillips. You've got the wire stripper, so a bunch of tools on that. You've got the nice big scissors. This came in handy. What did this was taking off tags off of we my daughter's birthday? She got so many new clothes, and uh, we took tags and like cut the tags out of clothes a lot with this one. Uh, you've got a pen right there, which is super cool. And then you've got a toothpick and the usual pliers. And then on the bottom, you got the hook and you got this and you got that. This came in really handy. The, uh, the little eyeglass screwdriver that goes in, in the, uh, corkscrew. This thing is awesome. Did I use the cork? No, we had a regular corkscrew. So I didn't use the corkscrew there, but uh, the compact is one of my favorites. And and actually here, uh, I didn't show you there, but right in here, it actually has a straight pin. Um, I know a lot of people put little holes in there and then put a pin in there. This just accommodates you uh, right out of the box. The compact, this one is really cool. And uh, it doesn't get a lot of press, I feel, uh, but it's very useful. Okay, uh, next up, this one uh, I, I kind of uh, did a little damage to. Uh, this is the Eutectic EFD. That's Everyday Field Duty, uh, designed by Liang Ma. This is the Liang Ma sort of affordable line, and I really like it. Uh, we just gave away uh, the Trinity, which is the clip point flipper that just went out. Um, I, I kind of botched it because... So there's a thing I do when I'm done with paper towels. I'll take the paper towel roll, put it on the corner of a countertop, and then slice it. You know, we probably all do that or something like that. And this time, I, I think the knife just isn't that sharp. And I got to be honest, uh, though I love this knife, 14C28, and it just wasn't that sharp. Um, and I haven't used it that much at all. Uh, but it's super thin behind the edge, very nicely ground. So... Uh, has worked well for cutting up until this moment. <laughs> and as I was doing it, it actually like hit the cardboard and maybe my angle was a little too steep. You know, you got to cut it like at a 45. Um, and maybe I was more like at a 60 and, and it didn't bite in. It skipped on the, on the surface of the cardboard and it hit the marble countertop. And I actually saw a spark. It was a little dramatic and cool. And I was like, God, you know, and I, I swore a couple of times and then I looked at it and yeah, you can see it, 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 I have to do a little work on it. You can see right there. It's right in the center of the belly, basically towards the front here. It's just wobbly. It's, you can feel it. You can feel a ripple in the edge. I jacked it up, but you know what? You know, we, we have to do stupid things like this. Uh, once I restore the edge, I won't care about the ripple. It'll just be uh, there. Oh, remember that time you did that stupid thing? Yeah. 
Uh, but this one I have been loving uh, since shorts weather has come. It's nice and light. It's thin. It's my only orange knife, and for some reason it seems summery to me uh, because it, it might get put down, and it'll it's easy to see, and it's super light, and yeah, it's very, very useful. A uh, great knife for every task except chopping a paper towel roll in half. So uh, I really like this Eutectic. I got to fix the edge. That's uh, that's pretty much a, a priority coming up here. All right, next up, I had the Caracara, the bird Caracara. This is another one that got a lot of carry uh, as a secondary knife um, or as once as a primary knife. The one reason I don't use this I, I am very hesitant to use this as a primary knife is because I consider my front right pocket the primary knife. This I have set up for waveableness out of the front pocket, uh, which means that if it's in my front right pocket, there's nothing stopping it other than, you know, probability from it from opening and then having me slice myself. So I just I don't like having knives in pockets when the spine of the blade isn't engaging with the seam in the corner of the pocket where it cannot come open. So, uh, but this did get carry uh, a couple of times. One time was when we were zip lining and, uh, uh, you know, in my mind, I'm like, what if I have to cut rope? I'll want the serration, but it's nice and thin and light. And it's not as expensive as the other serrated blades I brought. And if I lose it and it falls out of my, you know, so all of that kind of st stupid overthinking, uh, which I do a lot with my knives came into, into play here, but I really like this Kara Kara. Uh, I love the the spidey edge there, and uh, the way it steps down from this very thin edge right there. That's an eight CR thirteen MOV blade. You've got that uh, black FRN. Um, it feels cheaper than a Spyderco. You can tell it's not a Spyderco, but it's also solid and super useful like a Spyderco. So. Um, you know, it just feels like a cheap Endura, basically. I like, incidentally, I like the blade shape of the Caracara better than the Endura, though I don't like the, I don't know, sperm-shaped opening hole there. I prefer, I guess that's more of a teardrop. I prefer the the round opening hole to that. Uh, uh, my finger, I don't like the way it feels. It's like my thumb can kind of get pressured into that corner up there, and it it makes me nervous. <laughs> uh, but overall, I love this knife, the Kara Kara. Uh, I incidentally uh, also got the idea for this knife from Scott Babb of Libre Knife Fighting, who does a lot of videos using this knife. So he definitely inspired that purchase. Next up, uh, not sure why I chose to carry this other than or to bring this other than I hadn't carried it in a while frankly, kind of missed it. The Kaiser Mystic. Uh, great design by Paul Munko. Um, he, his company is called Colorful Filth Designs, but Paul Munko is the designer. And uh, man, I love this knife. I love everything about this knife. Uh, the look, the feel, the action is incredible. And then the back story. Paul Munko is from Connecticut, and this is Mystic named after Connecticut, a ship building and very maritime uh, town in Connecticut. And also, by the way, uh, lots of uh, ship builders from the Amalfi Coast moved there. So some of the best pizza in America is in Mystic, Connecticut and in the shipbuilding towns of Connecticut. Um, this has a harpoon shaped blade, which harpoons are oftentimes a deal breaker uh, to my eye, but I love the way this one looks on that clip point. And then a very uh, ergonomic and and whale-like, I need to find out the word for that, whale-like uh, handle. And then this is all based on, you know, harpoons. It's It looks like a piece of whaling kit, basically, which I think is very, very cool. Also, that Rex 45 blade is amazing because it patinas. And I forced a patina on it, but then removed it. And now, now a patina is slowly starting to form on it. I need to carry it more. I need to cut meat with it and that kind of thing. Um, but in the meantime, uh, it's nice and light. It's It's got that bolster lock setup. And um, but it carries really nicely. 
I found it. I found it perfectly uh, amenable. Is that the right word? No, perfectly fine in light shorts. The Kaiser Mystic. Next up, this one also got a lot of carry because it's light and it's just cool. I just love this knife, and it's colorful. Uh, you know, with this purple anodization, it 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 does have a bit of the um, cognitive dissonance going for it. Like what a what a cheerful, beautiful color purple. I know, and on your screen it might look bluer, but it's just a, a lovely color. Really nice anodization job. And it's a it's kind of a happy looking knife, even with these somewhat gnarly serrations. Something I love about Microtech serrations is when they're partially serrated like this, the serrations dip below the main edge. So it's not the sort of thing where they cut out the blade and then the serrations from it. They cut out the serrations first and then sharpen the rest of the blade. And I like that because it makes the teeth stand proud. And uh, not only is that good for their self-esteem, but it's also good for cutting and also um, cutting over time. Uh, those will dull, and uh, but over time, they will remain the sharpest part of the blade. So if they're, if they're standing proud uh, by comparison, you'll, you'll, just, you'll get a lot of cutting life out of it. Um, me, I could, I could cut for centuries probably with this knife, uh, M390 blade steel. And uh, with, with my current lifestyle, uh, I could cut for centuries and probably not have to sharpen it. Uh, that tells you how much I actually, you know, do with my knives besides chopping them in half, chopping uh, paper, paper towel rolls in half. But it's always there. It's always ready. And um, I really, I, I dig the LUDT and the story behind the purple is uh, I would have gotten something way more tactical. Uh, but by the time I got off my duff to actually buy an LUDT Gen 2, which is what I love, uh, the Gen 3 had come out and these became hard to find. And this was frankly the last one I could find. <laughs> and uh, but I'm glad I like it. I like purple as long as you know I can live with this purple. Um, not uh, not on too many knives, but I, I really like it on this one. So, all right, next up, this is the uh, Tim Kennedy folder from Emerson Knives. Uh, and this got carried once while I was there, uh, one day uh, while I was out. And I had planned to go for a walk in the woods, and I never did. And this is... I, this is a bummer to me because that's the that's the one solo activity I looked forward to um, on this trip and on this annual trip. And I just didn't do it this year. And it, it kind of hacks me now, now that I'm back in civilization and uh, I didn't I didn't go to the primeval forest to reset. Uh, so I guess I'll have to join the dog on the lawn barefoot at 5 a.m. and pee on the tree, which is a is a distant second but anyway uh this knife is a beautiful long slender uh kind of fighting bowie uh tim kennedy when he talked to uh ernest emerson about collaborating on a knife he said i want something long and stabby and so it's a nearly four inch 154 cm v ground chisel edged blade here uh, it's got a great handle, super ergonomic as we've come, as we expect from the start from Ernest Emerson uh, handle design. A great guard. I love the guard on this. You ask for something stabby, you want to make sure your hand doesn't slide up onto that blade if you stab into something more resistant than you expect or run into something uh, under the surface of whatever you're stabbing into. Uh, so the, the handle itself gives uh, great uh, contouring. Uh, to follow the handle, a great spot to put your, um, I'm, I'm sorry, to follow the hand, great spot to put your thumb. I love the triple wide jimping, you know, with you get the blade and then both sides of the handle you get on Emerson's like that. It's just a very comfortable spot for your thumb. But I love the giant uh, four finger guard on this. Uh, no wave, one of the few, uh, you know, most Emerson's have waves. Uh, this one, does not i'm not sure i miss it it's kind of nice as a novelty but i as a as a sort of rule i prefer the wave if it's an emerson uh, because i i really believe in that mechanism uh 
as a way of possibly deploying a folder in a tactical sense. Like when I really think about it and when I really like, I would just much rather use a fixed blade. Uh, but if I had to use a, a folder, uh, I would, I would expect the wave to be the, the handiest of, of the bunch. Uh, next up, another light automatic, one of my favorites, the Protec TR3. Just a classic, classic design at this point. I I got this TR3 hoping for the one with the fish scales on it, but have since uh actually I'm 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 since happy I did not get those. I love the fullers on this, the grooves. They are great for gripping, you know, that your finger wraps, fingers wrap around and really nestle into those grooves. Uh, so it feels great. This is an aluminum, milled aluminum handle. Uh, the fish scales are cool if you're a seal. I'm not a seal, and I feel like eh, maybe that should be, there are certain things that should be reserved for certain people. And to me, those fish scales are, are, for, <laughs> are for Navy guys. Uh, what was I going to say about this? Oh, this one right here also comes in a Warrior Edition uh, where they have the little luminescent button there. Uh, but uh, overall, probably my favorite Microtech or uh, Protech. I'm sorry, I have three Protechs, and they're all great. But this one is the most universal to me. This is like the greatest uh, of the three that I have: the TR2, this, and the Rock Eye full size Rock Eye. This one is probably hits hits all the marks for me. It's small enough. It's light enough. This is a 3.4 inch blade. I'm uh, I'm starting to feel like my my wheelhouse is shrinking just a little bit. I don't need four inches or 3.75 inches. Like 3.4, 3.5 is great, especially, again, in the summer. This aluminum handle is so nice and light but super sturdy. And, of course, that Protec action is just awesome and very, very different in a way from the Microtech action. I always say Microtech is crunchy and Protec is crispy. I hope that means something to you. It means something to me. Uh, both are desirable. Crispy is desirable. Crunchy is de desirable. But the sensations are different. And the sensations uh, of the actions of those two knives are different in the same way. That's what I'm going with. All right. Next up, the very cool Resco Instruments Mekong Delta Combat Folder. The heaviest of the pocket knives I brought with me. Not, It's not that heavy. It's got the weight relief, but it's full titanium. And that's a full 4-inch 20 CV blade that is uh, saber ground. So a lot of meat on the blade, uh, unlike uh, the version that I first saw of this that was hollow ground. I wish this one was or were. Um, but this one... When in my pocket is the only one uh, that I didn't carry uh, of the of the regular size folders here. And it went in my pocket a couple of times. Uh, it was once usurped by the Kara Kara and then also by the Mystic, just for lightness sake. Uh, if I had worn jeans at all, which I didn't because it was nice and hot, uh, this would have gone in my jeans. Because I haven't carried this one in a little while, and this was my... Uh, I was very loyal to this for a while really love this knife uh, but just kind of hadn't carried it in a while mekong delta combat folder next up this one is so sharp god i've been loving this this has uh, been my uh i've been carrying this so much since i got it at blade show about a month ago this is the ek integral uh by les george and alan alishowitz to extremely uh, accomplished and well-respected knife makers and designers, also former Marines um, of different ilk. Uh, Les George did uh, ordnance disposal, EOD, I guess, explosive ordnance disposal. So, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> take, some, take some cojones to do that. And then uh, Alan Alishowitz was Force Recon, which is their special forces. So also... Lots of cojones went into the design of this. Also, two guys who love daggers and have been working on special dagger projects together and uh, with other knife makers and solo for years now, and I've been following them both. So this Eck, this version of the John Eck dagger as a folder and then integral, 
forget about it. This is my first integral, uh, my first flame anode knife. That handle hits all, all of the right notes in terms of uh, echoing the Eck design. And then you've got the dagger here. Of course, it's uh, single edged, uh, but the they, they release it in this dagger grind and then also in a high height uh, flat grind. I think they call that one the bayonet. Uh, love this thing. And this one is uh, nice and light, even though that's integral and that's like a chunk of uh, titanium there. Uh, it carries pretty light. Um, even in shorts, it carried nicely. And then so this this one, um, this one got carried a bit. And we went to a farmer's market and I used this to slice all sorts of stuff and was just surprised at how easily this cuts everything. Um, and then I ended up using, oh, I forgot to mention, it was this one. This one ended up preparing a, an entire meal for eight people because I had left my chef's knife back in my cabin and uh, it was too far to actually fetch when I started to cook. So I used this and it did great. My wife also <laughs> used it. Uh, this one at the, at the farmer's market, the Eck, did a lot of food prep too, and a lot of like cutting of weird plastics and and different uh, different materials, and it is just awesome. I highly recommend uh, you buy this, you save up for it. I think they're going to come out with another release of it. Uh, it's not inexpensive. This was a four hundred dollar knife, and that is expensive to me um, for any kind of knife, but uh, especially uh, a production folder. And that's what that is. It's a small uh, OEM production folder from somewhere. I'm not sure where. All right. The last folder in the bunch <laughs> was uh, didn't get any use. It, it was next to the bed. Uh, but I was like, I can't go on vacation, especially uh, up to the woods and the mountains without a full. Uh, I say the woods. I didn't even make it into the woods. We did um, other recreational things. Uh, but without a uh, an XL cold steel, I'd have to be absolutely nuts. And then once I went, I was like, why did I bring the tall wire? That's all like about urban combatives. <laughs> and I was like, and then I had to tell myself to just get a hold of myself and be real. Uh, but what I was trying to tell myself was if I got lost in the woods, is the tall wire the XL folder I would want? Well, turns out that wasn't an issue. But uh, the also the answer is no, I would have wanted... Uh, uh, one of my voyagers or something else with a, uh, you know, different blade, I guess, but didn't come up. Love this thing. And by the way, this knife or all of the cold steel XL knives are great backpack knives. Um, maybe it's light backpacking. Maybe it's just urban, whatever, getting around. It's a lot of cutting power that folds up into a relatively small uh space you can stash it uh and forget about it until you need it and that's what i do with my um sr1 uh folder uh that lives in my backpack and there it lives and there it lives and then every once in a while i'll use it every once in a while like once i forgot a knife i did a whole video on oh my god i forgot a knife i got to use my backup and i carry that knife all day it was great to have and in an emergency, it would be uh, the bomb diggity. All right, next. Uh, this is the first of the fixed blades I brought, and I carried this thing all the time. I love this knife. This is the um, Knives by Nuge Primitive Wicket. So the Wicket is his a small um, neck knife, and the Primitive uh, uh, speaks to the fact that it doesn't have G10 or micarta handle scales. I don't know if he does micarta, uh, but that it's uh, wrapped in this jute twine, which I love, and then and then burned and then epoxied and everything. So this this is like super robust. It's not it's not in any way coming unraveled or anything. If you're ever concerned about that, uh, that's that's not the case uh, with these kind of twine wrapped knives. Makers tend to uh, impregnate them with epoxy, um, and this is no exception. Rides super flat to the chest. I mean, like this, I had this under T-shirts right next to my skin, and I, I'm surprised. I thought that the uh, the jute twine would annoy my skin, but it's so thin and so light, it just sort of stays off the skin. 
uh, or just kind of doesn't bother me when it made contact with the skin here this thing is so so ridiculously sharp uh it's it's got a scandy grind here with a with a tiny little relief edge i'm not even sure if that's a relief edge or if it's just been dropped by the maker tom nugent but man this little thing is so freaking sharp i highly recommend it i highly recommend it um and and personally i love the look of it with the twine he makes larger versions of this knife and then other knives like it uh, he's an outdoorsman from New Jersey, which I also appreciate. People think of New Jersey, uh, oftentimes they just think of Trenton or Newark, but there are a lot of beautiful and wild places in New Jersey, as I learned when I was in college and had a chance to go there with friends. Uh, and he is, he, is a, he is a New Jersey pioneer, a New Jersey frontiersman. Now, he's just a guy who likes to camp uh, and make knives, and there's his uh, logo. I love it. Tom Nugent, great guy. I got a chance to meet him and his lovely girlfriend at Blade Show, where I bought this from them in person. 80 CRV2. I really dig this knife. And then here's another cool little part about it uh, is that it's got this little wazoo clip. So you don't have to choke yourself if you're walking through the woods and this gets caught on a branch. This little clip will undo and uh, you'll be free. All right, next up... Uh, just in case I brought this, the Randall made uh, number 16 special number one. How, what, how, yeah, the SP number one, number 16. So that basically what it's, it's a number 16 Randall made handle uh, set up here with the number one blade on it. So this is a special knife. I got this a few years back from knife center knife center always has a nice very small selection of randall made knives and this one and the dagger the model two i have the combat stiletto just happen to be knives i've always wanted um and for me i've always wanted the number one blade and the number 14 attack handle uh but this is basically basically the same thing whoops sorry that's that's not good TV, I know. Uh, but the combination is stunning, I think, with the handle grooves. It feels so good. fits my hand perfectly. And uh, then you've got the double-edged fighting blade. And by double-edged, I mean it's the, sh the swedge from here to here on the backside is sharp. And by the way, that's how all Randall knives are, uh, which is very interesting to me. Even, even the hunting models are sharp on the back. So uh, I wonder if that's because they come from a fighting lineage uh, or, or what, but I really like and appreciate that. And another thing I like and appreciate is this incredibly sumptuous leather sheath. Very stout and sturdy. And there's a little gouge on the back, and that's pissing me off right now as I speak, but I'm going to keep it in control here. Uh, just a very, very nice sheath. And I know that over the years, uh, Randall has used different sheath makers, and then there have been different people who have made sheaths, especially for Randall's. I'm not exactly sure about the whole sheath story, but I know that, that there isn't just one story. Uh, next, I, I had to have a couple of fixed blade knives because you never know. Um, that one, of course, is for just hanging out um, around the place. Uh, this is another one uh, that I had in my backpack in case I was going to go uh, for the walk. I was going to bring this. Uh, this is the Wild Pig Hunter from Topps Knives. And uh, I love this knife. I think of this as an outdoors knife, but really it's a combat knife. Uh, and in this case, it's optimized for sticking pigs, but it's it's taken from a Russian combat knife design, and it has a super thick ridge down the center. It's about a quarter inch, and you've got that full thickness running down the center here. This top part is not it's a it's a swedge, but it's a sharp edge swedge. Like it's not a gradual uh, type thing. It steps and then. It has a relief cut here. So it, it removes a lot of uh, metal and lightens the weight, but also has a very rigid cross section. It's sort of like a an I-beam. And then super sharp edge. 
black ground. I love this thing. You've got that great handle. This was a gift from my wife a few years back uh, at my strong direction, of course. She has great taste in knives, but, you know, we all need direction from time to time on the particulars. Beautiful, beautiful leather sheath. Please, makers and companies, especially Cold Steel, start using leather again. Leather sheaths. Yes, leather sheaths. I know, I know, animals have to die for that, but uh, let's just assume they're already dead. All right, uh, next, hog to uh, not hog tooth, not yet. Uh, the Jed Hornbeak Necromance. Now, this was the one that was just totally gratuitous. I know, pretty much all of them were, but uh, because this is this is more at this point uh, a fall and winter weight. EDC. I can carry this one in the three o'clock position. Um, so this was mostly just a bag knife, just in case I needed, you know, a 4.75 inch a fighting knife, double edged. Uh, this was there for me. So basically it was there to gawk at and to hold. I love the way this feels in my hand. Uh, it, it almost feels better having it in hand than not. If you ever had a pair of slippers like that, uh, that's kind of what this is. So this came along and, uh, and was basically doing guard duty. And then the last, the last, uh, I'll bring these out. Well, of course, the Nova 2 came along with me. And this one is great. I'm loving this in the three o'clock position in the waistband. This knife has pretty much brought that back for me because uh, this was getting a lot of light. I, I carried two different fixed blades the whole time. Uh, in shorts and even in my um, uh, bathing suit, I would unclip before I got in the water. Uh, but bathing suit in the definitely not in the appendix, but in the three o'clock position. And this rounded off handle, just so nice against my love handles. Uh, and they're not my love handles are not big, but they're there. You know, I am not a washboard. And so this this is gentle this curve is very gentle on the on the softer parts and so this this knife was very comfortable and i gotta i gotta be honest i love just pulling this out and using it because it's uh sort of dazzling people see it in the white handle and the red liners like oh my god uh so very very great knife carried that a lot and then of course this this thing has been getting non-stop carry uh, by me, and that is the Agent 001 by TKL Knives and myself. I brought both of these, so uh, they don't really belong to the sheaths, but uh, this got carry more later in the day. This got carry uh, more with the swimsuit in the three o'clock position, like I mentioned. I didn't have to bring both knives. I could have just brought both sheaths because they, they are 100% one, interchangeable, but I'm so I'm so enamored with this knife uh, right now, and just seeing one of my um, designs um, go through the works with one of my favorite knife designers, Tim Kell, and then have him put it through his process, which yields some of my very favorite fixed blades in my collection. So just an honor altogether to be a part of that process. And this one is my ultimate favorite with that purple burl handle it's just it's just beautiful it's just beautiful and uh man he did a great job on these this is uh aebl it's also an ad crv2 both of them are nickel boron coated and 100 percent good to go these are also screamingly sharp like uh like all t-kill knives so that's 17 knives. And then, of course, there are a couple that are in the backpacks that live there permanently that I'm not even counting. So I had well over 20 knives with me, including the stuff in the car that live permanently in the car. So I was looking at it this way. If, if the bottom fell out of society while we were gone, we would have enough knives to trade our way home, to trade our way into some gas, to trade our way into some food, and maybe still have a couple of cutting implements left over to use. All right. Well, that being said, uh, be sure to uh, join us on Thursday, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, and uh, join us on Sunday for a great interview uh, 
the, the bread and butter of this here show. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying thank you so much for joining me. And please don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Ninth Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.